Probably shouldn't unplug that. Okay. All right. So, we should have this one open, the practice side. Start with PDC open. Here we go. Want to make sure you have time to work on yours. So, I am going to go through it quickly. But anything that I say, you can write down that can help you. So, the first part says determine molar mass. Molar mass is from the periodic table. It's from the periodic table masses, which are the numbers on the bottom. So, I'm going to look up PD's mass, which is lead. I'm going to look up you know, it's carbon. I'm going to look up carbons and I'm going to look up oxygen. I'm going to look up all their maps. Find them. Um, PV is way down here, number 82. It has 207.2. So it's a heavy one. Lead is heavy. 207.2. Then I have carbon. Carbon is 12.01. Well, yeah, you don't have to go to two decimal places. All right, now this two on the outside of it goes to both of them. So there are two carbons, and they multiply. That's what parentheses mean in math. It's multiplication. So it's two times three is six. So there's two carbons and six oxygen. So I need to take this and multiply it by two because there are two of them. For oxygen, oxygen is 15.99999. So that always rounds up to just 16. Okay, so we have 16, but there are six of them. Over here, we got 16, but there are six oxygens and multiply by six. So that's all my masses of the three different elements. I'm just going to add them up. I'm going to count this. So molar mass is simple. You just add up their mass. All right, so we got 207.2 plus parentheses 12.01 times 2 plus parentheses 16 times 6, close my parentheses, and I get 327, 327.22 grams per mole, because the molar mass is, is mass, which is grams, grams is type of mass, over one mole. If I had one mole, if I had 6, one, two times 10 to the 23rd, atoms, or not the atoms, the formula units of lead, lead carbonate, it would weigh 327 grams. All right, that's the first. Just masses on your table. Then you have your three types of problems we've done. Phone ringing. Hello, Miss Catherine. I mean, I don't. Why is any here now? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because I haven't looked to see, like, how bad it is. I have a meeting right after school. So. Okay. Because, yeah, I was like, I'm here in the morning, but uh, after school, I have an avid meeting. All right. Thank you. Okay. So back to this. You have the three types of problems we've done. You had two one-step problems. Like two different types. They're both one steps. And then you had one two-step problem. So we're going to do both. That's three problems. All right, like always, start with what's in it. You get credit on this assignment, on this test grade, that hopefully it's good because you have the practice. You get credit for showing work. You have to show work. Show some work. If some of the work is correct, like you just writing down what you're starting with, that's you knowing what to do a little bit. I can give partial credit to that. If you just write down an answer that I have no idea where it came from and it's wrong, all I can do is mark it wrong. So give me something. You start with what's given. I know this is a one-step problem because moles is in the question. When moles is in the question, it's a one-step problem. You can write that down to remember. But anytime moles is in the question, it's going to be one step. So I have 500.0g times just one step. I know it's going to be one thing. I'm going to put an equal sign because I know it's all I'm going to need. All right. And the next step is whatever unit, not the number, whatever unit you are given is the unit that must go on the bottom. Notice I did not take the 500 with me. I took the grams with me, just the unit. 
So I want the units to cancel. My x over x in algebra cancels, so does g over g. All right. What goes on top is what they asked me for. So the one step problem, what they asked me for is moles. What number went with mole? Who remembers? One. one. Look, 12 days is still no mole gets a one. All right, now what went with grams is the molar mass. But I haven't added that up yet. <laughs> so darn, I'm going to have to take a second and add up a whole other molar mass for calcium 3 PO4. I think on y'all's, I actually made it easier on the test side on the back that what you already added up is the molar mass because of the same compound. I didn't do it on this side. So let's practice molar mass one more time. Here we go. I need a room. I'm going to write over here the molar mass of Ca3PO4 with a little 2, like that. So I need calcium, I need phosphorus, I need oxygen's mass. All right, calcium is 20. Nope, 4. 40.08, okay, 40.08 is calcium, but there are three of them, so times three, it says three, phosphorus, I don't know, it's 30.97, 30.97, but this two goes to everything inside. So there are two phosphoruses, so times two. Then I have oxygen. We know oxygen over here. Oxygen is 16. Still is, but now there are two times four, so there's eight. So I have 16 times eight. And I add all those up. Still the same way I did number one. I'm just going to add all those big numbers up. So 40.08 times three. Hit any that I'm gonna add. 30.93 times two. Then press that. 16 times eight, hit enter. And I get 310.1. So that is the molar mass of calcium phosphate. Calcium phosphate. So that is the mass that goes here. 310.1. So how did I get this number? is I had to do molar mass. I had to add up their mass on the pair table. That is what goes with grams. One goes with mole. The grams is what the weird thing I have to take a break and add up on the pair table. Now it's all set up. Grams cancels. Moles is what's left. That's what they asked me for, so all I gotta do is put this calculator. It's this, times one. So 500 times one is still 500. Divided by, because it's on the bottom of a fraction, that means divide by 310. So I have 500 divided by 310, 0.1. And I get 1.61. Well, there you go. That was the first kind of one-step problem we did. She's going from grams to mole, or mole to grams. The next one is easier. Next one says I'm going, I want atoms, so how many atoms, from this many moles. So again, if it has moles in the problem, it's a one-stepper. It's still a one-step problem. Just now I want atoms, so there's no grams involved. So write down what's given. 6.1 mole. Multiply by one step, because you know it's a one-step. Moles in the problem, it's a one-step problem. All right, if mole is here, notice how gram was here, gram was on the bottom. So now moles is up top, so now moles is on the bottom. And flip because that you always put the unit that was given on the bottom in the fraction. Now, what they give me, they want me to get to atoms, it's a one step problem, so I have to get to what they asked me to get to, which is atoms. So atoms are going to go on top. What I want to get to always goes on top at the end. And one's going to go on the bottom because one goes to moles. Now, who remembers what goes with atoms? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So if it is not mass, mass is where I have to annoyingly add it up in pair table. It's longer. If it's atoms or molecules or formula units, any of those things, they get that big number, 6.02. 6.02 times 10. 
to the 23rd. That is just the mole number. That is the Avogadro number. That is the number that you would have if I had a mole with it. All right. Now moles cancels. Add is what I'm left with. Add is what they asked me to get to. So I just got to put this in the calculator. But that's a big old funky number. Big exponential notation numbers need to be in parentheses. So I'm going to put in 6.1 times parentheses 6.02 times 10 raised up to the 23rd, closing it, close my parentheses to enter. I should get a big number. You just multiplied by a big number, so it should be a big number. 3.67 times 10 to the 24. I remember when y'all took that quiz. Only two people actually put in the times 10 to the something. If it says times 10 to something in here, that is, that's a part. That's the answer. Put it in there. So it's 3.67 times 10 24. All right. So that was our one step. Now we need to do our two step, and then we're done with mole problems. Just have the last two easier types. You need to scroll down. Here we go. And clear. Little one. Okay, so now we're on our two step. How do I know what the two step is when I read the question? Says how many atoms, that's the question, how many atoms, will be present in grams? Didn't mention moles. If it doesn't mention moles, so there's no moles mentioned, then it's a two-stepper. So that's how I know. You'll also know, because it's the exact same order on the test side, this number question will be the two-step. All right, so given 28 grams, so that's what I'm going to start with. I know it's a two-stepper, so I'm going to set up a two-stepper. Okay. That's right. Just like last time, whatever is here must go on bottom. Something has always been to what? Okay. Grams to a what? What's going to go on top? Atoms. Mole. Mole. Moles is always a part of it. Atoms will be there eventually. <laughs> that's what we're trying to get to. But it's always something to a mole. So if you haven't put mole yet, then that's, that's what goes there. Now let's just go ahead and keep going with our units. I'll get back to the numbers. If I want moles to cancel now, because I want to get to atoms, then moles will go on bottom. You notice it's always top bottom, gram, gram. Mole, mole. It's got to be top and bottom so they cancel so I get to what I was asked for. Whatever I'm asked for is what has to go on top at the end. That is what should be at the end on top. Whatever they ask me to get to. Now I just got to fill stuff in. If you look above the past two problems, it just tells you what goes here. What goes with mole? One. What goes with atoms? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Look at your previous problem. It was atoms as well. So this is atoms. It still gets 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That's what goes with that. Let's go with molecules. that go with formula units. That's what goes with them. Now for the grams, remember grams is molar mass. So that's the more annoying one. I gotta take a second to look it up. But luckily, so molar mass is from the periodic table. One second. But luckily, it's just platinum. So platinum is not a compound. I don't have to add anything up, I just gotta find platinum. This is PT. 195.09. That's what we need, right? Well, it's fine. I can wait Okay, so it's going to take like 10 minutes. Um, so now it's all set up. So I got grams. They're going to cancel. Moles going to cancel. Atoms is what I'm left with. That's what I need. So I got to put all this in the calculator. But this is a longer problem. It makes it easier to make calculator errors. So how will you put it in? Do the top first. 28 times 1. Still 28. 28 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Remember, that's in parentheses. It's a big number. So 28. Times parentheses, 6.0. Raise the point there, close the parentheses, and I get a big number. But I'm going to leave that in the calculator and I'm going to divide by the bottom. The bottom says 195.9. I'm going to divide by 195.9. Hit enter again. I could divide by 1, but that would give me the same answer. So I'm going to have to do that. Answer's done. Gives me 8.6. 8.60 times 10. 
to the 20 second. Oh, that's right there. One second. There we go. So it should be a big number. You were getting an answer in atoms. Atoms are really tiny. You're never going to have like two atoms in a jar. There's always like billions of them. So it should be a big number. In all right. Last two types of questions. Those, that's all the mole ones. It says, what is percent composition? This had a different formula. It was the part divided by the total times 100. That was the formula. You always take the parts, as in mass. So their mass in the periodic table parts divided by their total mass. And total mass is just molar mass. Add another molar mass. Okay, so my parts are K, C, and O. Those are my parts. Different elements of the compound. Potassium is 39.09. So I'm just getting its mass. 39.09. But there are two of them. So let's multiply by two. Carbons is 12.01. But there are two of them. So times two. Oxygen's mass is 16. There are four of them, so times four. I'm going to get that answer. I'm going to add all those up, and that's the total. That's the molar mass. So 39.09 times 2 is 78.18. Added to, no, I guess I'm going to write down that. 12.01 times 2 is 24.02. Then 16 times 4 is 64. So those are all my parts. I'll label that up here. This is my part, this is the part, part, part. They get divided by the total here in a second, but to be able to divide them by the total, I gotta add them up to know what that total is. So when I add up 78, I got 78.18 plus 24.02. Oops, I need 18. 78.18 plus 24.2 plus 64. And I get 166.2. So this down here that you just added up is the total. So part divided by total. I'm about to take all those parts. I'm going to divide each of them by the total. That gives me my percent. After multiply by 100. Okay. So let's take that total. Put another color, 166.2. Let's divide them all that by 166.2. Divide by 166.2. Divide by 166.2. Move this up. Okay. So now I got 78.18 divided by 166.2. And I get 0.4704. I'm going to multiply by 100 in a second, so that's decimal still. Then I have 24.02 divided by 166.2. And I get 0.1445. And I have 64 divided by 166.2. And you get 0.38. Five, one. Okay, the last step in the problem is multiply by 100. That's what gets it into percent, the percent of potassium, the percent of carbon, the percent of oxygen in this compound. When I multiply by 100, you can, of course, put that in the calculator, but you don't have to. You could just hop the decimal over to one, two. That's what multiplying by 100 does. So it would be 47.04% is potassium. Then I get 14.45% is carbon. And then I get 38.51% is oxygen in that compound by mass. We got one more. Easiest one. Okay. Last one says which is an empirical formula and which is a molecular formula. Remember, empirical 
means it's already been reduced. It is in its lowest state. I cannot divide any of them by the same number. Molecular means it's actual formula. So it probably isn't reduced. You probably could reduce it. So when I look at these two, which one is reducible? The first one. I can take the 6, 12, 6. They can all be divided by 6. So that one is reducible. So this is my molecular formula. That's a real formula. It's sugar. That's regular sugar. And then this, PO5, I can't reduce that anymore. So that is my empirical. Okay. So I'm going to hit stop on my record. I will post it when I'm done. If y'all need to rewatch any of it. <laughs>